Hi guys, welcome to this session and in this session we are going to deal with simple and compound interest advanced level problems. So the prerequisite for joining this session is that you at least are aware about the formulas for simple interest and compound interest and you all have solved the easy level problems related with compound and simple interest. So today we are going to deal with problems which require application of the concept of compound and simple interest. So without wasting any further time, let us start with the problems. The first problem is a boy aged 15 is left with 100,000 rupees which is under a trust. The trustees invest the money at 6% per annum simple interest and pay the minor boy a sum of rupees 250 as pocket money every month. The expense of the trust is rupees 500 per annum. The trust hands over the entire amount deducting the expenses incurred and the pocket money given to the boy after he completes 18 years. Find the amount that is received by the boy. Guys, this is a problem which you need to solve in 90 second time. So ideally, you should be able to solve these kind of problems in 1.5 minutes. So I'm going to place a timer here of 1.5 minutes so that you all can race against time and see if you can solve this problem within the given time duration or not and in which direction your preparation is going. So let's get started. All right, guys. So here we are given the principal amount, which is hundred thousand. So the principal here is hundred thousand. We are being told that the guy today he is aged fifteen and he has to get this sum of money after three years. That is when he completes eighteen years of age. So we have the time duration, which is three. We also know that the rate of interest is 6% per annum and we are told that the compounding we have to follow the simple interest compound, simple interest here and not the compound interest. So there is no compounding that is taking place. But they have given that this trust, the question says that this trust pays a boy rupees 250 per month as pocket money. So there is a pocket money which is paid and Finally, after you arrive at the amount after calculating simple interest, you have to deduct this pocket money that is being paid to the guy every month for three years from that particular amount. Also, you have to deduct the expense that the trust is incurring. So the trust is incurring an expense of 500 rupees per year. And that into three is the expense incurred for three years, which comes out as 1500 also per month the pocket money that the boy gets is 250 rupees and that we have to multiply by 12 to find the yearly pocket money that he is getting and for three years the total pocket money that this guy is going to get is 9000 rupees so the trust has paid 9000 plus 1500 which amounts to 10500 from its pocket 
so whatever is the amount of the trust amount that the boy should be getting at the end of 18 years we have to deduct 10500 from that particular amount so the amount consists of principal and simple interest the principal is 100000 and the simple interest is 6 into the principal which is 1 lakh or 100000 divided by 100 into 3 so when you calculate the simple interest amounts 2 rupees 18000 and from this amount we have to subtract 10500 so when you calculate you get the final amount that the boy is supposed to get comes out as 1 lakh 7000 500. So the final answer is 1,7500 rupees. I hope you guys have understood this problem. Now let us see the next question. So the next question is some amount was lent at 15% per annum interest after one year Rupees 4,400 is repaid and the rest of the amount is repaid at 20% per annum interest in the, at the end of the second year. If the second year's interest is 10 upon 7 times the first year's interest, find the amount of money that was lent out initially. So here we have to find out the amount of money that was lent out initially. Let this amount be P. And guys, your time starts now. Okay, so we've completed 1.5 minutes and here goes the solution. Now, the sum is lent at 15% for interest per annum. So, at the end of the year 1, the amount is going to be 1.15 times P. Correct, because we have to add the 15% interest as well. But it is given that 4400 was repaid after a year so i have to subtract 4400 from this particular amount because that was subtracted after a year and the rest of the amount is repaid at 20 percent per annum interest at the end of second year so when i find out the second year's interest so my second year's interest So this thing right here is my second year's interest which is 20 upon 100 into my principal amount which was 1.15 P minus 4400. So this is my second year's interest but it is given that this was equal to 10 upon 7 times the first year's interest. So my first year's interest now all I have to do is solve this equation for and I get the value of 
P as 56,000. So the amount of money that was lent out initially is 56,000. Now let us see the next problem. Ravi invests a sum of money in a bank which gives a simple interest at 6% semi-annually. He invests twice the amount of money in another bank which gives an interest of 3% per annum compounded annually. At the end of 3 years, at the end of 3 years, the interest turn from which bank would be higher and by what percentage approximately? So guys, your time starts now. Okay, so it is given that Ravi has invested a sum of money in two banks. The first bank is the one which, which is giving him simple interest and the second bank is giving him compound interest. So the rate at which the first bank gives him is 6% semi-annually, which means that we have to divide it by 2 in order to find out the annual rate of interest, which comes out as 12%. Now, he is investing the money at for 3 years in both the banks. Also, the rate of interest for the bank where the compound interest is taking place, where the compounding is taking place is 3% per annum. So, we have 3%. Now, the principal for the simple interest bank, let us assume that the principal is 100. And it is given that he invests twice the amount of money in another bank which is giving him compound interest. So, in case of compound interest, the principal amount is going to be 200. Now, when I solve for simple interest, I get the value of simple interest for 3 years as 100 into 12 into 3 upon 100 which comes out as 36. And when I solve, for compound interest, my compound interest is nothing but 1.03 raised to the power 3 into 200 minus 200. Because I have to, in order to find out my compound interest, I will have to subtract the principal amount from the total amount. So this comes out equal to 18.54 approximately. So clearly the bank which is giving simple interest is the one which is giving higher interest and the bank which is giving compound than the bank which is giving compound interest and it is higher by the in the interest that is higher is higher by 36 minus 18.54 divided by 36 into 100 percent. So that comes out to be approximately 50 percent. So the bank giving simple interest is paying higher interest by 50% as compared to the bank which is giving compound interest. So let us see the fourth problem. 
A stairway which is 12 feet high is such that each step accounts for half a foot upward and one foot forward. What distance will an ant travel if it starts from the ground level to reach the top of the stairway? So guys, your time starts now. Alright, so in this particular problem, we are given that there is a stairway uh, and has to reach from the 0th feet to the 12th feet and there is a stairway which is taking it to that particular height. But for the stairways, each step consists of upward and forward step. So the upward step is half a feet and the forward step is one feet. So all you guys need to do in this particular problem is find out how many number of steps are there in the total stairway on the total stairway which is 12 feet high. So if you divide you know that it is half a feet each step is half a feet upward is taking you half a feet upward. So if you divide 12 by 0.5 you get 24 which means that there are 24 steps. However, if you look at the last step, now these are going to be the steps. But if you look at the last step, the last step is just going to be the one which is taking you upward. And the last step is not going to have a forward distance covered because you just have to reach the 12 feet distance and then you don't have to go any forward. So total there are going to be 24 steps which are going to have upward distance. So 24 into 0.5 upward. But there is going to be one step less which is going to have forward distance. So 23 into 1. So the total comes out as 35 because this is 12 and this is 23. So the total comes out as 35. So the ant has to travel 35 feet in order to reach 12 feet upward, 12 feet high. Now let us see the next problem. A sum is divided between Sham and Ram on Jan 1st, 2000. Such that Shyam's share at the end of Jan 1, 2010 is equal to Ram's share at the end of July 1, 2010 compounded semi-annually at the rate of 6% per annum. Find the ratio of Ram to Shyam. Guys, your time starts now.
Okay, guys. So here we have a sum of amount. Here we have a sum which is supposed to be divided between Ram and Sham. So we have Sham here, and we have Ram here on this side. So let us assume that we have hundred rupees which needs to be divided between Sham and Ram. Let's assume that Sham has p amount. So Ram is going to have hundred minus. Now we are given that the rate of interest R is six percent per annum, but it is compounded semi-annually. So the rate of interest actually is three percent for one semi-annual period. And we are given the time frame. So time in case of Sham starts from Jan one two thousand to Jan one two thousand ten, which is ten years. But now we are given that the compounding is semi-annual, so it leaves us to 20 semi-annual periods. So we have 20 semi-annual periods. For Ram, the same. For Ram, the time period is Jan 1, 2000 to July 1, 2010, which is six months more. So he has 21 semi-annual periods for compounding. Now, at the end of 20 semi-annual periods, the amount that Sham has is equal to the amount that Ram has. So, let us calculate what is going to be the amount that Sham has after 20 semi-annual periods. So, this is the amount after 20 semi-annual periods, correct? And Ram is going to have. This amount. So, if you see, both of these amounts are equal. So, both of these amount are equal. So, from this we can very well find out P, and we can find out 100 minus P, which is Ram share and Sham share. So, if you find out the answer, the answer comes out as P equal to 103 upon 2.03, and the value of 100 minus P comes out to be 100. Upon 2.03. So, if you find out the ratio of Ram to Sham, the ratio comes out as 100 is to 103. So, this is the answer that we are looking for. However, guys, this is the traditional approach to this kind of a problem. But there is a simple approach which in which you will get the answer within seconds. Now, it is given that Sham's amount in 20 periods is equal to Ram's amount in 21 period. So, if you find out the difference between Sham and Ram, the difference is of one period's amount. So, you find out what is the one period amount, and you you will get the ratio between Ram and Sham. So, clearly, if you consider Ram's amount to be hundred, then Sham's amount has to be higher than hundred because he is achieving what Ram is achieving in twenty one periods. Sham is able to achieve that in twenty periods itself. So Sham is going to have the higher amount. So Sham's amount comes out as hundred and three rupees because the three three percent is the semi annual rate of interest which you need to add to Ram's amount. So I hope that you guys have understood how to go ahead with this particular problem in a more logical way. You'll be able to solve this problem in a logical way within few seconds. But nevertheless, if you guys are not very comfortable with the logical way, you can always go with the traditional way. Try to improve your accuracy. Do not end up getting the problem wrong, even if it takes more time to solve a particular problem. So let us go to the next problem now. A sum is divided between A and B in the ratio of one is to two. A per A purchased a car from his part which depreciates at 14.2 by 7 percent per annum, and B deposited his amount in a bank which pays him 20 percent interest per annum compounded annually. At what percentage will the total sum of money increase after two years due to the investment pattern? So your time starts now.
guys, here we have A and B and both of them are given a sum of money. A is given assume 100 rupees and B's sum is 2 times of A sum. So, B is given assume 200 rupees. Now, A has bought a car and that car is a depreciating set. So, we have a car which is depreciating and after 2 years, if you find out the value of the car, it comes out as 100, 1 minus 14, 2 is to 7, by the way, guys, is 100 upon 7 percent. So, we have 100 upon 7 percent here. The whole square. So, here I am taking negative sign because it is not appreciation. Here it is depreciation. So, we are not investing that amount in an asset per se. Here we are investing it in a depreciating asset which is losing its value. Depreciation means that the asset is losing its value. So, we have taken negative sign instead of positive sign here. Guys, remember this. This is the catch in, the, in this particular problem. So, when you find out this value, it comes out as, it comes out as 36 upon 4900. So, that is the value that A has after 2 years. Now, if you find out the value that B has, so B has put the money in appreciating assets. So, B, B's money is actually growing. So, we have 200 and the money is growing at 20%. So, I have 1.2 the whole square which comes out as 288 rupees after 2 years. So, when I add A after 2 years and B's value after 2 years, I get 361.49 rupees. So, this is the value, this is the sum of A and B after 2 years. Now, we started off with 300. So, A plus B is equal to 300 and the growth is 60 divided by 300 which comes out as 20%. So, approximately the money has grown from 300 to 361 which is a 20% growth. So, that is what the question is asking. I hope you guys have understood this problem. Let us get to the next problem. Three amount X, Y and Z are such that Y is the simple interest on X and Z is the simple interest on Y. If in all the three cases, rate of interest per annum and the time for which interest is calculated is same, then find the relation between X, Y and Z. So guys, your time starts now. A little hint, I have included the options because you have to use these particular options in order to get your correct answer. So guys, get started. Alright, now this question is all about assumptions. So, let us assume either you can check each and every option 
or you can assume the values of x, y and z. So let us assume that x is 100. We have the rate of interest which is also another assumption is 10% because it is the simplest calculation wise it is simplest to assume the rate of interest as 10%. So now I get the simple interest on x for a year at 10% as rupees 10. But what are they given? Y is the simple interest on x. So this is equal to my y. So I've got the value of y also. And let us calculate the simple interest on my y at 10%. So I get the value as 1. And this is the value of my z because it has given that z is the simple interest on y. So I have got three values. I have got the value of x, y and z. And if you find out the relation then you get y square z is equal to x. So the correct answer is or I can say y square is equal to x into z. So the correct answer is option D. I hope you guys have understood this particular problem. In this problem, all you have to do is assume the values for x and assume a rate of interest. Find out the value for y and similarly find out the value for z. Okay guys, so let's get to the next problem. This is the last problem of this particular session. If a principal P becomes Q in two years when rate of interest is R% percent and it is compounded half yearly, and if the same principal P becomes Q in two years when S% percent is compounded annually, then which of the following is true? So guys, your time starts now and in this particular problem also you have to make few assumptions. Okay guys, so the time has ended. Now, here we are given that the principal amount is the same but the rate of interest is changing. So, in two years when my rate of interest is R% percent, and this is compounded half yearly, I am not given whether it is R% percent per annum or whether it is R% percent semi-annually. So, I am going to consider R to be semi-annually. Then in 2 years, I have 1 plus R upon 100 to the power 4. Correct? This is what my amount is going to be after uh, 2 years. Because I have to compound it 4 times since it is semi-annual. And now it is given that this amount is equal to 1 plus S upon 100 the whole square. This amount is equal to Q. When I am compounding it using S% percent per annum. So when I compound it using R% percent, then I have to do semi-annual compounding. Hence 4 here. Hence I am compounding it by 4. And here I am squaring it because I have the rate of interest which is S. 
and it is compounded annually and for two years this is the amount that I get. Both this amount equal to Q. So when I equate them my PP gets cancelled and I am left out with 1 plus R upon 100 raised to the power 4 is equal to 1 plus S upon 100 the whole square. Now when I take square roots on both the sides, I end up getting 1 plus R upon 100, the whole square is equal to 1 plus S upon 100. Now let us assume the value of S in such a way that I get a perfect square for this particular term. So, I am going to assume the value of S to be 21%. When I assume the value of S to be 21%, this particular term comes out as 1.21. And when I take square root of both the sides, I get 1 plus R upon 100 is equal to 1.21 square root which is equal to 1.1. So, this gives the value of my R to be 10%. So, the value of my R comes out as 10% and the value of my S comes out as 21%. Which means that the value of my S is going to be greater than the value of my R. So, the correct relationship is the value of my R is less than the value of my S. I hope you guys have understood this particular problem as well. So these were advanced level of problems. We solved 8 advanced level of problems which are of the level of RBI grade B or CAT level problems. So with this particular problem, I am ending this video. Stay tuned for more such videos. Thank you.